we've just concluded the, the Politburo meeting. Let me start by saying uh, before the Politburo's meeting started, a meeting of hundreds of ZANU-PF supporters organized by the Women's League was held at party headquarters in honor of HE's splendid work he did as chairman of the AU throughout 2015. The First Lady, Dr. Grace Mugabe, who has the Women's League, gave a brilliant address in reference to what HE has done for women, not only in Zimbabwe, but throughout Africa and beyond. She enumerated a number of programs and achievements of women in a most eloquent manner. Her message was received with plural ululation from the audience. In his address, His Excellency the President thanked the Women's League for organizing such a thrilling meeting and gave a detailed calendar of his operations as a AU chairman during his tenure. His Excellency the President thanked the Women's League and the people of Zimbabwe and Africa at large for the support he received during his tenure as chairman of the AU. He appealed for unity of purpose among ZANU-PF supporters, hard work, and focused leadership. The focus should be on the implementation of ZIMASAT. His Excellency the President then led the Politburo members to the main meeting. <coughs> and in his welcoming remarks, His Excellency the President implored members to examine issues with the depth, focus, and debate matters with facts. In line with the agenda, the Secretary for Legal Affairs, who is also Minister of Finance and Economic Development, gave an update on the Zim asset. The update included initiatives to minimize the adverse effects of El Nino induced drought on food security, supply of energy, value addition and beneficiation efforts, infrastructure and utilities, funding and the investment promotion. <clears throat> the National Disciplinary Committee report was not yet completed and the cases before it will be heard by the said committee through some hearings from those affected. In other words, those affected will be written for the hearings before the National Disciplinary Committee for presentation to the next Politburo meeting. <clears throat> the Secretary of Administration, Comrade Chombo, gave a postmortem report of the 15th National People's Conference held in Victoria Falls last December, which was accepted by the Politburo. Comrade Chombo also gave a projected report 
on the state of administration for 2016, which should be finalized in due course. The Secretary should also give a report again on Zimaset's implementation so that we are all aware of the progress being made. The Secretary for Youth Affairs gave a comprehensive report on preparations for the 21st February movement celebrations to be held in Maswingo on 27 February 2016. The Secretary for External Affairs, Comrade Mbengegui, gave an external affairs report highlighting the standing ovation His Excellency President Raji Mugabe received from other heads of state and government on his address to the recently held AU summit. He also spoke eloquently on the reform of the United Nations Security Council. He also reported on Palestine and the Sahrawi Democratic Republic. In all sessions, closed or open, His Excellency the President received outstanding ovation from his colleagues for his focus on the development of the continent. Members' assessment of contributions were also upped up so that by the end of <coughs> Ten years, I think, from now, we are able to pay all our subscriptions without relying on our erstwhile colonizers. The National Commissar, Comrade Kasukwere, gave also a report on the functioning of the Commissariat Department. And so far, the party has won all the by-elections, including council elections. The Secretary for Legal Affairs also tabled the resolutions of the 15th National People's Conference held in Victoria Falls last December. Now on succession and factionalism, which I know you are very keen to hear on, let me start by saying that ZANU-PF is a revolutionary and democratic party. This issue was discussed at length, very frankly, openly, and in a spirit of comradeship. I'm talking of the issue of succession and factionalism. All the contributions were very productive. His Excellency the President, in his response, reminded the Politburo that our party is guided by ideology. Contradictions are possible in such a massive party, but this must never be antagonistic, as has been happening 
recently. Differences of opinion must not be perpetuated at any given time. Factionalism must never be allowed in the party because we only have one center of power. The party's motto, as you all know, is unity, peace, and development. And expressing oneself through the press, including use of social media, must stop with immediate effect. I want to repeat this. Expressing oneself through the press, including use of social media, must stop with immediate effect. Leadership calls for responsibility and not for a rumor mongering and the insults. The party has structures and procedures to be religiously adhered to. The party is not run through the press. So we are not going to allow any member of the party at whatever level to run the party through the press. We must maintain and safeguard our party's principles. And we must never lose focus, so said the president. We must always exercise introspection and check within yourself whether what you are saying is based on any facts or on facts. In life, there's always room for compromise should you have any differences. There must be some degree of maturity based on the party's principles and procedures. This must be constructive talk all the time. In other words, don't just engage in discussions without being constructive. It is important to be always push yourself to be constructive whenever I debate any issue with any colleagues. And therefore, talk must be guarded. We must never allow misinterpretations, as I've noticed in the papers. Finally, the president called for Teamwork for a one team and the work in harmony as a party. Let me conclude by saying we must at all times as leaders fulfill our responsibilities respect each other and learn as much as we can from each other. Let the women and the youth be empowered and ensure the implementation of Zimaset to improve the quality of lives of our people. So it was an extensive debate, very open, very frank, and uh, there was no 
holds bad, as it were. So that is the position of the outcome of today's political meeting. I hope I'm clear. And that message was for the president. Stop using the press or the media to communicate party activities without going through the proper channels. Party has a stru has structures and those structures must be made use of. And we must, as I've said earlier, avoid situations of being antagonistic to each other. We must always be positive, be constructive, and have that aspect of introspection. So that's the end of the statement. Have you got it all? Yeah. yeah. So there we are. Long meeting, but uh, very frank, open to each other. And very frank indeed. Was there any decision on what could be done against those that have been engaged in the malpractice of uh, antagonism against each other, maybe talking to them here? This is, this is a message from the president. And naturally, if we don't follow the directive given to us as a party, those who don't want to listen or who fail to understand this message will be handled in a manner which the party has. In other words, through the proper structures of the party. I've already mentioned to you the National Disciplinary Committee is completing its work because there are a few outstanding cases and as soon as they complete their hearings they will convey to us their recommendation and the Politburo sh shall take appropriate action. So it applies also to those who don't take heed of this advice. We want to talk development. We want to hear people talk about Zimmerset. We want to talk, hear people talking about a future which we must work on in terms of what legacy do we leave for those who remain behind. Yes, comrade. Yeah, I just want to take you back to... There are two comrades. Oh. Which one is it? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I understand um, the president, the airport, issued a warning so that um, the comrades who were attacking each other should stop the practice. Should what? Should stop. That's what I've when said. He here. When he arrived, yes, from uh, uh, and then you also issued a similar statement. Yes, but the comrades never stopped. What guarantee is there that they will stop now? We don't want. To, we don't work on guarantees. We work on those who transgress. If they don't listen to these messages, appropriate action shall be taken naturally. And we've got structures to do that. Yes, Governor? Yeah, I, I, I simply want to, to find out 
uh, some of the cases that are being handled by the National Disability Committee. Uh, I can't give you those details now. It's a, it's, it's a list which they are working on. So we didn't want to do things piecemeal. We want them to complete their work and they will be, they'll be reporting soon after the hearings. You notice that this time we have said there must be hearings. People must not just be suspended or, or people must be heard also. What is your story? That is natural justice.